Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. In honor of Shark Week that's getting ready to happen over on Discovery Channel, I thought the Crafty Beach Channel should try to take on some shark DIYs. You know we love our coastal decor and coastal DIYs over here. So I wanted to do like a shark video full of shark DIY videos using supplies from the Dollar Tree. And I came up with these four DIYs and I really hope that you enjoy this video. Okay, let's get started. For the first DIY, I'm gonna use two of these long, um, just plain wood signs from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. These come in a couple different sizes. I would say this is like the larger one that they come in. I like them because you can kind of put them together and make a sign um, any size that you would like. And I kind of want to do a long skinny sign and so I thought I would side by side two of those together. Now to brace them together, I'm gonna use some of the craft wood from the Dollar Tree as well. Unfortunately, it's a little bit long, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use my saw to cut both of those pieces to shorter pieces and we can make little braces for the back of our sign. Um, the Dollar Tree signs, you know, a lot of times are really thin. And so I'm gonna try to do the top and the bottom and see if we can get these guys flush with each other and make this look like one large sign. Now, if you had a thrift flip sign or a large sign that's big enough for you, for you for the Dollar Tree, then yeah, go ahead and use that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and build this one from scratch. My idea here is I want to do like a very ornate like school of sharks. Now, to get started, I don't want it to be the raw wood. I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. Um, this is gonna kind of be a background color. The color I'm using, um, I think this is Caribbean blue, and it's just an acrylic paint, and just something to kind of represent a background of the ocean. I just wanted to do a, some kind of a shade of a light blue for the background. And so this raw wood from the Dollar Tree, you know, it's so easy to paint. It does kind of suck it up, but one coat is all it takes. And we have a blue sign. I'm not gonna worry about those holes on the top because um, we're gonna cover all that up. Now I designed this and I will share um, the printable for this. I just printed this out on regular paper on my printer of three sharks. I think they're all exactly like the same size. I just want three sharks to look like they're swimming in a school of fish. So I'm just using my scissors to cut this out. Now, once I got like my pattern cut out here for my shark, I thought it would be easier to um, cut all three of them at once. And what I'm gonna make my sharks out of today is burlap. I get this burlap at Walmart. It's only like $2 and something a yard. It's really cheap. And so I'm just gonna do three layers of burlap and add my shark to that and cut out three at a time. Now, I thought I'm just using spray adhesive to adhere it because I could not find my stick pens anywhere, but pinning it might work better. Now, I thought this was gonna be a big time saver, um, cutting them out all at once, but I don't know if I'd really suggest that. So when I share it, I will go ahead and share the three sharks I think if I did it again, I would cut them out individually. The reason being is that the tail is really skinny and one of my tails did kind of break off. Actually, maybe two of my tails kind of broke off and I had to kind of try to piece them back together. So 
Might have been a time saver, but it probably cost me more time in the end. So I'm just cutting around all the edges of this shark. It kind of has a forked tail on there, which I can't really get that kind of detail on there. So I'm just going to kind of um, not cut that detail into it. I tried to find just a silhouette from a shark overhead swimming in the ocean. And you know, a lot of people are really scared of sharks. And I used to be like that too before we moved to Florida. But now we stand sharks. We really, really love them. And I only like hyperventilated like once when I was out snorkeling the very first time I encountered a shark. But now, I, you know, sharks swim in the ocean. It's their ocean. And so we love, we love our sharks here. My son has definitely changed my perception of these giant fish. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is glue these on. I'm just going to do a really thick layer of Mod Podge um, and glue the little burlap sharks down trying to repair the tails as I go. As you can see how my tails kind of fell apart because the burlap being skinny like that and me cutting them all out at once, I think, um, made them kind of fray apart. But I'm gonna kind of just stagger these on the sign. It's gonna be a vertical sign and I want them to look like they are swimming in a school of sharks. So I do a thick layer of Mod Podge, lay down the burlap, and then go over the top of it as well to make sure that that burlap stays down because that is definitely going to be in the finished product of our School of Sharks. And I don't really care that about, you know, the Mod Podge I'm getting everywhere else because I'm going to cover the ocean part of the sign. So once we have that all dry, I'm going to use some of these blue pebbles from the Dollar Tree. You guys have probably seen me use these before. I love these. They're so pretty and they go great with coastal decor. I'm just going to use one bag. One bag is going to be perfect for this DIY today. Now the first step, this might have been the most time consuming part of it. I want to do a border around each one of my sharks of the blue pebbles. And so I'm doing that with hot glue so that I can quickly dry that. And the reason I wanna do that is because I wanna make sure that I don't attach any of the blue pebbles um, to the areas where the sharks are, where the burlap is. So basically, I'm just kinda creating a border around the sharks, but it also kinda creates like an outline around the sharks and um, really brings out that shark shape, kind of adds to the decor of it. And you guessed it, we're gonna go ahead and cover the entire sign, all the blue ocean parts, with those blue pebbles from Dollar Tree. They're a really nice, like light blue color. Um, some of them are like a tan, which I don't really mind. I don't really like the dark brown ones. I might pick those out here and there, but the tan ones kind of add a little bit more depth to the project. It would be fun too. I thought about adding like a white too to kind of do like waves, but then I kind of decided that was probably going to be too much trouble, but this would be the time to do it if you wanted to add like some waves or some lines in your water. Um, you could do it the same way that I'm outlining these three sharks um, just by hot gluing it on first. And that way um, you won't be attaching the blue pebbles to those areas and it could kind of create a two-tone. And so this is the time consuming part, just gluing those all around and trying not to burn myself with my hot glue gun, which I think I was actually successful at this time. I would like to take a moment to thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to do all those YouTube things, like, comment your favorite DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, whenever I use rocks or anything really heavy on a sign, I like to use this tacky glue. I get this at Dollar Tree as well. I find it a really gooey, strong glue, which is what we're looking for. 
So I'm gonna kind of work like a section at a time and I want a nice thick layer of gooey glue to glue down our little blue pebbles. So once I get that on there, um, I am just gonna start adding the blue pebbles and kind of smoothing them out, kind of using my hand as a shield on the side so I don't create like a huge mess. But if you're worried about that, you can definitely put something down underneath to catch those rocks. But we actually did pretty good. So I'm just gonna keep working a section at a time, kind of a manageable section at a time, and just keep adding pebbles. I wasn't sure one bag of the pebbles was gonna be enough, but it turned out to be perfect for this project. And whenever I do like a pebble project like this, it is kind of time consuming um, to glue it all down because you do have to let it dry, but oh my goodness, it turned out so pretty. And this piece is like, it's so substantial. It looks like something that you paid an artist a lot of money for. So I really like this. Now, if sharks really aren't your thing, you could you could do this with like any kind of fish or sea creatures. I know I got a lot of whale lovers out there as well. And I think it turned out really pretty. Kind of an overhead look at the ocean with a bunch of sharks swimming by. And here's our last section. We're gonna glue that all down. Now I just wanna remove any pebbles from the burlap that fell in there. And then I'm gonna use some of this spray glue. I also get this at Dollar Tree. And basically I'm gonna empty a whole can, um, but to glue these all down from the top as well. So we glued them from the bottom, we're gluing them from the top. We don't want these rocks to fall off and we want this to stay together. So this step is definitely crucial. I start the drying process, but that's not gonna it, uh, cut it. You have to let it sit overnight, which I did. And look at that, one rock fell off. So we did really good. Now I wanted to frame it out. I wanted to make like, it. it's a nice heavy sign. So I thought a box frame would be really cute. And so I'm gonna use three pieces of this longer craft wood from the Dollar Tree. This is kind of the thicker one. And two pieces are exactly the same length as that sign from the Dollar Tree. And so I'm only gonna have to cut the top and the bottom pieces. I'm trying to subtract for the width of the sides because um, you know your girl doesn't like to measure. <laughs> And so I cut two pieces of those for the top and the bottom of our box sign. Now I thought I wanted to make them kind of look like driftwood. So I thought this would be the time to do that. I'm just mixing ivory acrylic with some antique wax by Waverly to kind of give me a base brown color. I'm kind of going for that driftwood, but I want some of that wood to shine through. So I'm gonna kind of wipe off the excess paint with just a baby wipe. I think I want a little bit more brown, so I do add a little bit more antique wax to it. And this is gonna kinda give me a base coat for my driftwood. I want it to look very coastal, very driftwood, um, not like this new wood that it looks like right now. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the top and the bottom, just going over it with that paint and then going over it with a wet wipe, kinda giving me a like homemade stain look, cause you can still see the wood grain through it. Then I'm gonna go back with that Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and just start distressing all over, bringing in some darker brown colors, kind of working in one direction, also getting my edges, and then going back and wiping off the excess with a baby wipe. And it's gonna give me a really beautiful finish on this wood. So that is really quick and easy to dry and now we can build this. So the frame is gonna be like a box frame where the frame is kind of behind the sign. So I am gonna go ahead and get these ready to glue on. Um, I love that this craft wood is the same length as these signs from Dollar Tree that made a little bit less cutting. So I'm just gonna do a bead of hot glue. I use the Gorilla Glue hot glue. It works really well for wood projects. And I'm gonna line that up flush with the edge of the side, 
trying to keep it as square as I possibly can. You'll notice I cut those braces a little shorter to allow for a frame around the sides. And I'm gonna do the same thing here with the other piece. Now I'm trying to get through the voiceover on this video. As many of you guys know, I have been very sick. So um, yeah, traveling is dangerous right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please be careful out there everyone and stay healthy. Now I'm gonna glue the top and the bottom on. You know your girl didn't measure, so it's not perfect, but We'll fix that here in just a second. I'm just trying to make sure that it's all kind of glued together and any cracks there at my seams, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in. And I just glued it all together with my hot glue, trying to make sure that it is square. And this is my remedy for not measuring. I'm just gonna use a little spackle to fill in any cracks at my seams of my little bit of frame here. I had cracks like on three corners, but that's usual. I am not a carpenter. I have never claimed to be. <laughs> and so I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in and then kind of touch that up with that um, antique wax by Waverly to kind of make that blend into the paint on our frame. And that is it for this DIY. I love how this turned out. It is so beautiful. And I'm trying to decide where this is gonna live forever in my house because I love it. It would go with any of my coastal rooms in my house. And I'm gonna hang it vertically and it's gonna look like a school of a shark swimming by. So this is our first DIY for our Shark Week here. And this is how it turned out. What do you think? For our next shark themed DIY, I'm gonna use some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I needed two packages. It is the 11 foot long white rope. And then I found this blank sign at Goodwill. I got it half off, so it was $1.50, but it looks like it's originally from Hobby Lobby, and it's just perfect. It's a blank. You can use whatever you have that's the right size, Dollar Tree sign, thrift flip, whatever you've got. And then I'm just using my ink pen to try to sketch out what I think would look like a shark fin um, peeking out of the top of the ocean. And I did have to go ask my son, what does a shark fin look like? Because I didn't want it to look like a dolphin. And this is what I came up with. It was super easy, but you could always use a um, print out a shark fin if you're not sure that you can sketch one out. But it was a really easy shape. Now, I want to create like a shark fin painting out of rope. I saw something similar online that someone had made. I'll try to find that and post that below, but it was definitely my inspiration for this piece. And I thought I could recreate that with Dollar Tree products. And so I'm just gonna cut this white rope to size to go around my shark fin. And I'm just gonna use hot glue to glue that down into the shape of the shark fin. And I'm gonna kind of use all white rope today, but I'm gonna paint it to kind of make look like I did, had different colors of rope. Definitely a cheaper option than buying a bunch of colored rope. And I'm gonna cut that to size and glue that down. Now this is gonna be the border for my shark fin. And then I'm gonna go back and fill it in. Now the reason I use the 11 foot uh, white rope from the Dollar Tree is cause it's a little bit thinner than some of the other white ropes from the Dollar Tree. And I wanted um, it to be thin as I possibly could to be able to um, add lots of detail. So as you can see, I'm just cutting a piece at a time of the rope and then hot gluing that in, kind of working with that arch of the shark fin. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get all the areas of my shark fin filled in. Now, when you cut the rope really short, like this last piece, you kinda gotta be kinda careful because it kinda falls apart. So I'm just gonna kinda glue all the little pieces together and we have a shark fin. Okay, 
Now I want this shark fin to look like it was kind of made out of gray rope. And so I'm gonna use chalk paint. Chalk paint works really well on fabric, so it also works well on rope. This is the color Elephant, and I am just gonna go over it with a brush and try to make this look like gray rope. Um, I'm not gonna be able to get in all of the nooks and crannies, but that's okay, because it's gonna kind of give it, you know, like a distressed look like I like with a little bit of that ivory shining through but I'm trying to get it like as gray as possible. I like to use a brush for that because I find that it gets like into the rope um, a little bit better. Now I'm gonna go ahead and also use the rope to do the ocean. So I'm just cutting the pieces to size. Um, three of the ropes will actually fit underneath the shark fin barely, <laughs> when I lined it up here. You might wanna measure that first if you're gonna recreate that. And I'm just gluing those three pieces down. And then I cut all the pieces there for the left. I'm also gonna cut pieces for the right. And this is gonna represent the blue ocean, right? So I'm just gonna work one piece, of time, one piece at a time on the rope and hot glue those down. Doesn't have to be perfect. They're not all cut perfect. Some of the rope's gonna kind of overhang my frame, but that's okay, because I think it's gonna give just another fun coastal touch to this DIY. Now, I want this to kind of look blue. Now, the blue agave chalk paint is a little too dark when it dries for me for the ocean, so I'm gonna mix it half and half with some ivory chalk paint to kind of give me a lighter blue color. I wasn't sure on that color, but I do like how that turned out. And I'm gonna do the same thing as before. I'm kind of trying to be careful, um, only keeping it on um, the ocean ones and not getting it on my shark fin. But if you're worried about that, you could always use painter's tape um, to tape that off or to tape off your frame. But it was pretty easy actually to um, kind of keep that just on the rope and not go crazy. Now, if you kind of want to get in the nooks and crannies, I wanted it to be a little bit more blue. I'm using a smaller brush and kind of going in and getting any of the little areas that I wasn't able to get with a larger brush and kind of doing that detail around the shark fin, trying not to get any on it. And it's okay that the ends of my rope have some white sh shining through. A lot of times a colored rope is gonna look, um, have some white in it anyway. And I think that looks pretty cool. So upon drawing that, we're gonna work on the sky. So we're gonna do the sky like vertical, just to kind of mix it up from the horizontal rope for the ocean. And so just cutting that all to size, and that is about how long that 11 foot package of rope lasted me on this one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing those down. I was kind of hot gluing two pieces at a time at this point, and I was a pro. And just cutting these smaller pieces to go um, on the top of the shark fin. And again, when you get down to the very small pieces, it does kind of want to fall apart a little bit, so you do have to kind of be careful, um, kind of glue the pieces down together. So we're gonna start our second package here of rope and kind of work on that tiny area here at the top. And I'm gonna leave this rope just that natural white color. I kind of wanted this to be like three tones. I don't wanna do another blue because I have the blue already in the ocean. And so we're just gonna do a nice ivory background for this DIY. And I think I'm gonna use this a shark sign in my son's bathroom, his beach bathroom. I think this is gonna be really cute in there. It's really kind of a rope version of a shark painting. I love it. And one little piece left there to fill in with rope. And look at this, guys. I think this turned out so cute. So I'm gonna make sure all of my chalk paint is dry. And then I'm gonna go back with some ivory chalk paint and a little tiny brush and kind of do like a little bit of swell, um, a little sea foam um, like around the edges of the shark fin to kind of make give it the illusion that it's kind of peeking out of the ocean. And then also just do like, you know, some little white cap waves here and there on the ocean, just kind of using a wet wipe to kind of blend that in and try to not get it really on the shark fin, but kind of make it look like it has a little bit of depth 
to the shark fin. And this is how it turned out, guys. What do you think? I think this turned out so cute. My son really uh, liked this DIY. Okay, up next, our next shark DIY. I'm gonna thrift flip this like boxy wood sign that I got at Goodwill. It can be whatever you have. I like to use Goodwill signs because a lot of times like I get them half off. I always do the half off day at Goodwill. And like I got this for $1.50 and you know, it's made out of real wood, but you could always use signs from the Dollar Tree as well, or even thrift flip something that you don't use anymore. But basically I just need to cover up all this crazy writing that was on there. And so I'm just gonna work like one thin coat of ivory chalk paint at a time. Um, very thin, so it'll dry really fast. I'm um, using my heat gun in between all the layers because I just want to cover up all that writing and give me a basis for a shark sign. I want to do like a really primitive shark. So once I make sure that it's really dry, I'm going to use some of these baby shark um, decals from the Dollar Tree to kind of make a stencil. So this is an option. If you don't have a Cricut, you could always do something like this. So I'm just gonna peel off one of the little shark decals. I think this is like, what is it? <laughs> Daddy shark, I won't sing it, I won't do it. <laughs> and it's the perfect size for the sign. Now I know there's like a border around it and it's kind of a cartoonish picture, but I thought this would be a good head start on a shark. So I kind of want the shark to be lighter, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down to protect it. And then I'm gonna distress all over my sign with some antique wax by Waverly. Now I want this to look like a really old wooden sign all beat up at the ocean. So when I, once I get that on there, I'm gonna go back and wipe off the excess antique wax with a baby wipe and start distressing this. We want this sign to look all beat up. I'm gonna make sure I do all my sides as well. And this is gonna be like a sitting sign, but you could always hang something like this too. And it kind of depends on what kind of sign you're gonna start with. But this was the perfect size for this little shark. Now, once I get that all stained and distressed on there, I'm gonna go ahead and dry that first coat of distressing with my heat gun and peel off my decal. <clears throat> now, I wasn't real happy with the tip of the shark nose going up like that. I thought that made that look kind of weird, but we're gonna work with it. <laughs> so I'm gonna distress all over that a little bit with some more antique wax and some dry brushing. Then I'm trying to get it, go back in with a small brush and that antique wax and see if we can kind of take that point off the tip of the shark nose. It was a little fat with a border and it's kind of cartoony. So I'm just gonna try to um, shape it up a little bit if I can with some antique wax to kind of slim it down a little bit, but it's kind of close enough. I kept seeing like upside down dolphin <laughs> from the shape, which you probably could. But uh, if you wanted to do a dolphin sign, there you go. There's a stencil for it as well. So in just kind of distressing that as I go along, you'll notice I have like lots of colors of brown. I have dark areas, I have light areas. And again, just trying to shape it up a little bit until I'm happy with our little shark guy. And I went to ask my son, does this look like an upside down dolphin or does this look like a shark? <laughs> He thought it looked like a shark, and he even told me what species of shark it looked like. There's a big, plump shark like this. I can't remember what he said. Now, once I have that all distressed, I'm gonna go back and distress with the ivory chalk paint and a baby wipe, because again, I really want this to look very primitive, very old, very coastal. If there's any areas that are a little too dark, I go back and distress a little bit with the ivory and kind of going all over with that. To really just, I just really want it to look very, very rustic is the goal with this side. And I want to brighten up the shark a little bit, so kind of distressing it heavily with the ivory. And distressing is very forgiving, so especially with the baby wipe when it's kind of wet like that. So don't be afraid to distress. I know a lot of you like to distress like me, but some of you don't, so it's definitely necessary, I think, on this project. 
So here is what we have so far. I'm kind of digging it. Now I do want to add um, some more details, but again, I want to keep it very primitive and rustic. So I kind of want to do a shark mouth. So I'm just using kind of a brown marker just to kind of give me some detail to kind of do a mouth. It wasn't really like the same kind of brown as the antique wax though. I'm gonna kind of go back over that with like a gold Sharpie to kind of make that look a little bit the same color scheme. And I want to kind of give this shark like a goofy little shark grin. We can't have a shark without some shark teeth, right? I'm gonna use a white paint pen. This is like my finest tip white paint pen. I think I got this on Amazon. And I am just gonna kinda go in there and give it some scraggly little white shark teeth just for fun on the top and the bottom. And then I thought for an eye, it would be really cute to do a screw. I'm just gonna kinda use a black screw that I had hanging around, but you can kinda use whatever you want. Since it's a box sign, it's nice and thick. So I'm just gonna kinda screw that in to the sign and it won't stick out the back or anything. And just trying to screw that in flush with my sign. And then I go over my black screw with a gold Sharpie just to kind of make that look like an old rusty screw for the eye. And give it more of that rusty decor. I'm gonna go over my teeth one more time with that white paint pen to kind of bring out the whiteness on them. And I just love how this DIY turned out. I also go back with my gold Sharpie and I do like five shark um, gills there on the side just to add a tiny bit more detail to our little rustic primitive shark. And I wasn't sure about this DIY, but I absolutely love how it turned out. I think it looks so cute. I think I'm gonna use this in my son's um, coastal bathroom as well. I know the perfect place to put it. And this is the final result. And this is how it looks on the top of my coat tree. It kind of looks really good there as well. And I just love that DIY. Okay, our last shark DIY. I kind of wanted a bigger frame from the Dollar Tree. So I got this one. It's kind of the one with like the hanging rope and clothespins. And it doesn't have a glass or anything. I thought this would be perfect. So I'm just gonna kind of take it apart, pull off the rope. I don't really need any of that. And I'm gonna try to do like a shark cutout on this DIY. So um, once I'm kind of cleaning up the frame a little bit, I have the little back. Um, I thought that would be um, useful. Um, I'm gonna cover it with um, something that kind of looks like seagrass. I got some of these uh, bags from, this is one's from the Target Dollar Spot, but they also have these at the Dollar Tree um, that would do the same kind of thing, kind of maybe with more holes. I'm gonna use this one from the Target Dollar Spot because it is the perfect size. So I'm just gonna try to use that back as a template so I can cut out a piece of this. This is gonna be the background of our shark DIY today. I wanted to try something different today. I wanted to see if I could use my Cricut to cut some of that removable wallpaper that you see, um, the blue with the green leaves there, um, with my Cricut to see if that would work, and it did. Okay, so I cut out the seagrass background Two size, so that looks really good. I just need to attach that to like the brown the, or the black cardboard that was on the back of the photo frame. And that is ready to go, perfect. Just attached it with hot glue. And I'm just kinda seeing, this fits perfectly on my Cricut mat. It's a little longer than my Cricut mat, but that's okay. Kinda measuring that as well so I know what kind of image to do when I do my Cricut. Now, I want to do like a cutout. I want it to kind of look carved. So I'm going to need something thick but easy to cut. So I'm going to use some of this foam board from the Dollar Tree. And I'm using just the background to cut out a piece for our sign. And then I'm just going to use a cutting mat and my razor blade and try to cut out a rectangle out of this foam board. Now, I really wanted white foam board, but my Dollar Tree only had black, so we're going to work with what they had here. <laughs> 
And I'm going to use my Cricut to cut the wallpaper, but it's not going to be thick enough, which is why I want the foam board um, to give me some depth to my carving that I'm going to do of a shark. So just kind of cutting that to size. Um, I'm going to cut the string off that frame as well. I'm not going to need that. And it looks way too dark and not beachy at all. So I thought we'd give this little frame a little beachy makeover. I'm just gonna use some ivory acrylic and some antique wax by Waverly together. And then just using a chunky brush, just really roughly distressing all over the frame, letting some of that dark wood show through. And that is just an easy way to distress. I don't have to go back and distress later because it's already distressed, kind of leaving the original frame in there. So just kind of trying to go around all the edges and it's gonna give me a simple beachy frame for our DIY. So this went through my Cricut machine. I did have to kind of flip my shark and I will share my Cricut um, design for that so you could cut that out as well. And I, this was kind of trial and error. The setting that finally worked for me to give me this perfect kiss cut on the wallpaper was the, I believe, premium vinyl glitter cut deep enough. And I'll verify that and I'll make sure I put that in the description. Because definitely I had to try more than once to get that to cut right. Now I'm going to kind of line that up. I didn't have to use transfer tape or anything. I just kind of peeled off that wallpaper and laid it, you know, face flat on my mat and laid my foam board on top of it. And that is our cutout on top of our foam board. Now, of course, my Cricut can't cut through the foam board. Wouldn't it be nice if it could? Oh, that'd be great. It's just too thick. So I'm going to use just my razor blade. And using the cutout that we did on our Cricut as a template, I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut out this shark. Now, cutting this foam board, I'm just not very good at it, but I'm kinda just kinda taking um, my time and trying to get that as good as I can, kinda working one little section at a time. And I did it, and it gave me that depth of the carving that I wanted that the thin wallpaper was definitely not gonna give me. So just kind of trying to shape that up the best that I can. One thing I didn't like about using the black foam board is the black like paper kind of was visible a little bit during those cuts. And so I am gonna have to go in and touch that up a little bit on the inside edges, but this is my plan to have the seagrass behind it um, shining through on the carved shark. So I'm just gonna use some ivory acrylic to go around those edges and kind of paint over any black paper that you can see. But you know, if you were using white foam board, this step would probably not even be necessary. But I'm always looking for cheap, inexpensive things to cut with my Cricut, and you guys know I love this removable wallpaper at Dollar Tree. And the good news is that like all of my Dollar Trees are carrying it now. It used to be just my large. Dollar Tree carried it, and now they're all getting these beautiful prints in, and this one is always my favorite. It's so beachy, and I thought it would be a fun take of the blue ocean, having palm trees all over it, being kind of wild. Now, once I got that all touched up, I'm just going to distress all over with that ivory acrylic, just to kind of give this a beachy feel and make it a little less clean and shiny and perfect. Kind of just distress all over with the ivory just to give me a little coastal touch there. Wiping off any excess with a baby wipe. Okay, so that is how I want to put it together. I've got the seagrass behind it. We have our little carved shark here on top. And there is our frame. I think it all goes together great. Now the problem is, is that the foam board was so thick that my staples in the back don't work anymore. Um because they just had that one thin piece of cardboard in there. And so I am going to have to glue it in to get this guy to stay together. <laughs> but this was totally an experiment, and I think it worked. It gave me a lot of great ideas of different things I can do with my Cricut. Now, I'll try to share this shark as a Cricut file and... 
a regular file for those of you that don't have a Cricut, because again, I did most of the carving by hand. You could totally do it by hand um, since you have to cut the foam board anyway with your razor. So I'm just gonna attach that to my frame with hot glue. And then I'm also gonna glue the seagrass here on the back. It's kind of fat, but I got to fit in my frame. And it's so lightweight because it's made out of foam board. I have one of these hangers. I'm just gonna kind of attach it with just hot glue because again, this is a very lightweight um, piece of art. And I think that will work. Now, when I cut out the shark, I kind of thought I was centering it with the sign. It did end up more towards the top of my artwork instead of the bottom. So I thought I would do a little detail here on the bottom. I thought I would use some of this. This is that twine from Walmart. It's a little bit thicker than the twine from Dollar Tree. And using hot glue, I thought I would do like just some little abstract ocean waves here at the bottom, just to kind of give another little coastal touch to this DIY and kind of make it look a little bit more centered. This is just me being extra because it kind of looked fine, but that's okay. And I'm so glad that my voice is held up to the end of this video, barely. Again, I've been really sick, you know, be careful out there. The new variants don't care if you're vaxxed. They just don't. My whole family has had it. So uh, at least I'm getting this out of the way before my big vacation to Hawaii, I hope. So definitely be careful. The airports are a zoo right now. So I am just kind of doing wave, 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 until I like get all the way across there with my twine. And that just provided a fun little last detail to this DIY. And I really like how this turned out. It's really unique. I like the carved shark look of it. And let me show you how it looks in my house. Here we go. I have it hanging here by my front door. I think it looks really cute. Definitely a fun little experiment using my Cricut. And I want to give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bums for sending me super thanks underneath my videos here on YouTube. I really appreciate your financial support for my channel. I'm a small channel and I, can, I appreciate every donation. Also, these wonderful viewers bought me a coffee on Buy Me A Coffee, so thank you. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching. Vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn.